What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and we still have more Kirby secrets and hidden surprises in this game for you guys. You guys keep sending me some amazing things, and of course we gotta keep it going. If you guys have any glitches or secrets or any type of hidden easter eggs that you found within Kirby in the Forgotten Land, send them my way. I really think this is probably about it, but who knows, every time I say that you guys find even more. Thank you to everybody that appeared in this video, and this is the fourth installment, so if you have something that you think I haven't answered yet, check the other three videos. It could definitely be in there and if I haven't talked about it that seems pretty obvious that's probably why I haven't talked about it I've already covered that so without further ado let's talk about the 11 things that you might have missed that are insane secrets within Kirby and the Forgotten Land one of the things that has bothered me the most is holding down Y to drop your ability it just takes too long compared to the past Kirby games where you could drop it in a heartbeat well did you know there's actually a way to drop your ability immediately instead of just holding down Y every time <clears throat> Get out my freaking way. You can press the minus button and it will automatically drop the ability without you having to hold anything. I wish I actually knew this when I was playing through the actual game, but I guess better late than never. This actually works on any type of mouthful mode ability too. You can easily just quick spit. <laughs> I just said quick spit. Vecto Forgo will chase you down this hallway for a long time, and if you're not really experienced with Kirby, and it might just take you a little longer than the average player, but if you're just completely brain dead and just don't want to fight this thing at all, you can wait. And yes, it's a pretty long wait. It's actually upwards for four to five minutes until eventually this hallway will come to an end. And once it does, the ball still kind of attacks you in the same order. It still tries to bite you and throw things at you, but this time it's just pressed up against the screen, so it'll try to bite you multiple different times in a row and you'll just have to finish it off before you can progress nothing really happens you don't really get eaten by the creature and it's not like an instant death which would have been pretty cool to see but yeah it's just kind of like you're stuck and you got to finish them here now on a tight screen now it's time for a pretty fun glitch. If you go to the Battle of Blizzard Bridge and you take the second route, if you don't know what this is, there's a secret route around the outside before going through the giant bridge in the front. If you go around the side, you'll get a harder version of all the bosses by going to the top. Eventually, you'll make your way to the end of the level, and when you're on the top part, you get to see this mansion from the top view all the way up here. But did you know you can actually make your way to that mansion using the hammer glitch? Once again, I've talked about this in past videos, but if you don't know how to use the hammer glitch, it's very simple. You want to fly up in the air, and then once you start to drop, slam your hammer on the ground and hold the jump button at the same time. Once you do so, right on contact, you'll fly up in the air, and you can make your way all the way to the mansion in the back. Once you're at this mansion, you can kind of just land on the ledge here, and it's pretty cool that this is even like not just rendered as a background object, but it's actually as a walkable frame, which means you can walk all the way around it and even around the sides. Now I actually tried to jump onto the back part and it will just respawn you back on the stage because you're definitely not supposed to be over here. But this was really cool that you can even walk on this thing in the background and I guess this is the new Luigi's Mansion game coming out soon featuring Kirby. This one is just a neat little physics thing that they programmed into the game. Now with the conveyor belts you can use the Morpho Knight sword and use the dodge ability to get some extreme speed depending on the way you're moving on the conveyor belt. If you're trying to move against the conveyor belt you obviously won't move that far but if you move with it, you'll start flying. And there's a section where the conveyor belt is moving very fast and it shows you exactly how these physics work with the speeds of the conveyor belts. This is something I feel like a lot of you probably did notice, but I personally did not notice. When you go back to Waddle Dee Town and you see the logo pop up, every now and then you get to see a character pop up sometimes behind the houses, such as a Waddle Dee behind one of the buildings in the back and Kirby coming out the main house in the front. Now this isn't always confirmed to happen, sometimes nobody will pop up, but I just never even seen Kirby pop up for me unless I just never got it or I'm just not paying attention when I'm going back to Waddle Dee Town. Maybe I'm not looking at the screen all the time, but man, this is a pretty cool little secret they added. You may or may not already know that Kirby can do spot dodges on the water. I guess you can call these water dodges. But with the sword ability, he can also do his sword slide as well, which actually makes traveling across the water super quick. You can slide across the water with your sword and even plunge into the water, which sometimes it's hard to even see Kirby go underneath the water in this game. There's really no weapons or mechanics that make him go underwater besides this one. It's really cool. You can hit enemies on the water and just travel across the water at super fast speeds. Last time we talked about the Waddle Dee band and how Kirby and Elflin and the other Waddle Dees dance to different paces with different songs. Well, there's even more stuff I have for you today with this band, because it's incredible how much work and detail was put in from HAL Labs. Did you know that the band actually increases the way that they play, and they're not just randomly pressing things, they're playing on beat and even increasing the speed that they play with the change in the middle of a song. Just take a listen.
But we have a second fact with this Waddle D band. They'll actually stop playing certain instruments that are not supposed to be played with that song. If there's a guitar solo, he will literally be the only one playing while everybody else waits. It is actually incredible how much detail is in there. Just take a listen. Now this is where it gets even crazier. Now the Waddle Dee band has different colored music notes depending on what song they're playing and it's not just random. There's actually an order to this because with some of the past games like Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, the different music note colors actually represented different artists that made each song. And it looks like we have the list of the composers for The Forgotten Land. Hirokazu Ando did the two planets approach the roach limit in blue. Yuta Agasawara, please I'm sorry if I messed this up, uh, Northeast Frost Street is what they composed, and of course, it's in yellow. Jun Ishikawa did Burning Churning Power Plant in pink, and Yuki Shimuka did Moonlight Canyon, and those are in green. And if you play the different songs, you get to see the different colors, which represents each individual composer that did that song. This is incredible. And you can even see this further if you look at the little chalkboard sign right beside them. It has four different colored stars, which all match the colors of the music notes that come out, which once again references the four different composers of this game. Literally how labs are geniuses. Alright, enough about the Waddle Dee band, let's move on. When in the Coliseum, the commentator Waddle Dee will eventually mention the words Pink Demon in this statement. He will state, our hero is a veteran of battle, folks. Some circles call him the Pink Demon. This, of course, is a reference to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, where his ring name was the Pink Demon in the boxing ring stage of that game, which was pretty interesting. Now, something else that's interesting is in Smash 4, it was never the Pink Demon. Instead, it was the Pink Puffball. And Commentator D also does reference this in a statement as well. And last but not least, we have a weird glitch that allows you to get on top of a libel mall. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I could not do this one. I'd spent maybe an hour trying to get this to work and I got very close and I know what I was doing wrong, but I just didn't feel like doing it. And no, this isn't it. This is just a cool way to get into the gate in the front. You can't really do anything else here because nothing else is actually a tangible object to step on. You'll go right through the sign and through the front of the building. So you can only land on this little gate in the front. But in order to get this to work, you will need Dragonfire Kirby. For some reason, the hammer glitch does not work here. What you'll need to do is bonk your way all the way up to the top off of each wall left left, right, left, right, and the problem with this and what makes this so difficult is you can't just randomly just mash the button in order to get up there. You have to time each button press as you hit each wall, and the timing is extremely strict. You'll understand if you try it for yourself. It's almost impossible to explain unless you try it yourself, and it's just very difficult, and you have to get very high up there. You'll be doing this for about a solid minute total, and you can't mess up or you'll drop back down. Now, the other problem is I managed to get all the way to the top, but I flew myself all the way off the roof, and I've done this several times. You have to curve yourself back towards the back side and also keep jumping to float yourself to the top of the roof. And if you do it, it'll look like this. Big shout out to EK on YouTube who actually posted a whole bunch of videos of glitches and stuff within this game and showed exactly how this would work. And you can even go to multiple different rooftops by flying around them and connecting to each one. This is really cool and it's a good way to just see the environment around and even the buildings in the background. There's even rendered in like old cranes on these broken buildings which is crazy because you can't even see them throughout the entire stage itself. This is definitely one of the most difficult glitches to perform in this game so let me know if you were able to do it yourself. And that was 11 new facts that you probably didn't know you could do in Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Thank you so much for tuning in today guys. I appreciate all of you that continue to send me these. Now I do have one little request if we do another one. There is one that I been hearing floating around but I haven't seen any proof of this. Apparently there's some proof that when you go into Kirby's house to sleep with Elphalyn he sleeps normal but when Elphalyn's taken away and he's not with Kirby he tosses and turns in his bed. Does anybody know if this is true or not and if so is there any evidence that I can find online without having to play the game all over again to get Elphalyn taken away? That would be really good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any other facts or anything let me know down below and if you enjoyed today's video stop what you're doing. Leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Kirby and Nintendo in general, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.